Well, another teaching directly connected to the false Nephilim eschatology, the idea that the Watchers came down and impregnated human women giving birth to the mutant hybrid offspring, is the serpent seed doctrine. We started researching this and discovered that the, the, the original serpent seed doctrine was an old latter rain heresy that was promoted by the late William Branham. And Branham actually taught that Satan had sexual relations with Eve and gave birth to Cain. Whereas the new crop of PPP teachers yeah. believe that Satan has the ability still to procreate with a woman. They connect this with the coming Antichrist, that somehow he's going to be a literal offspring of Satan. Chuck Missler in Alien Encounters teaches this directly. So do people like uh, L.A. Marzulli, mm -hmm. Gary Stearman, Doug Woodward, Richard Grund, uh, Russ Dizdar, uh, J.R. Church taught this. And I remember reading it in a lot of science fiction books. We should go back and explain that Latter Rain was a cult. It originated in the late 1940s. It came out of Pentecostalism, and it taught that mankind could become as God on earth, that it would be accompanied with signs and wonders, and it has a different end time eschatology that the church will become more and more mature and will rule and reign over the earth, even subduing nations, and that they must literally walk out the book of Revelation yeah. in order to bring Jesus back to earth, purifying the bride. And so one of the very aberrant teachings from this cult, which is now making its way into mainstream evangelicalism, is the idea that uh, they have to purify the planet before Jesus can come. And uh, therefore, some of this DNA teaching also yeah. has a dark side to it if it merges with some of the original Latter Rain eschatology. And there's a number of points where it could. We've already seen and talked about the hyper techno dimensional yeah. spiritual warfare stuff that this, this could be a very ominous development. This has nothing to do with the gospel of salvation or scripture or what Jesus told us about his second coming. Well, that also reminds me of one of the other tenets, and we wrote a whole article on this about the alien super soldier. Yes. Where these men are teaching that Satan is building a mutant army made up of these creatures that are going to combat Jesus when he comes back. This sounds like Star Wars. So, and it, it, it's space aliens, they use them interchangeably, but the idea is, is that somehow it's an us against them. They're, we are going to have to do something to try to get on the good side and defeat these entities um, so that, I guess, Christ can come back. Right. I, I'm actually surprised that so much of this teaching has been embraced by men who formerly used to teach the pre-trib, right. pre-tribulation -trib, pre rapture position. But once you start reading Tom Horn and some of these other fellows, you realize that their eschatology has really nothing to do with a pre-trib rapture. Um, as Larry, re Pastor Larry right. read the verses this morning, what Jesus said is the time of his coming will come as a thief. And these men are talking about these giant alien armies that are going to appear in the heavenlies and earth is going to be under attack and we're going to have to fight battles with them. There's nothing about that in scripture. This is not pre-tribulation eschatology at all. And it evokes that fear that Pastor Larry mentioned earlier yes. where we're not looking with joyful anticipation for our blessed for hope our blessed, of his coming. We are fear mongering and we coined a term, you coined a term, prophecy mongering, Based where they're using that, all yes. of these things, for, and, and then these men then become the experts to guide the way. Mm -hmm. Instead of looking to the scripture, instead of relying on the Lord and reading the word of God, and, and allowing the scripture to transform us from within, we look to these men who have the secret answers on how to get out of the mess that's coming upon the world. So there's all of that, the, the money that might be made selling the books and the uh, the DVDs and and on it goes and on it goes and every day there's a new twist you know a new uh, idea that comes up that's piggybacked mm -hmm. on the other one and standing back and looking at it it's unbelievable that any blood-bought believer in Jesus Christ could even pay heed 
to even one of these ideas that's totally foreign to well, the scripture. They seize upon imagination. They, they really produce these fanciful uh, science fiction stories and tales that are very alluring, very intoxicating. And um, I've talked to many uh, Christian believers who have gotten bits and pieces of the, these teachings and it's very easy to believe them uh, just because they present an alternative future scenario. And uh, it's very, it must uh, be very seductive to think about it. It also taps into the popular culture. And many yes. of these men will actually seize on the matrix, the 13th floor, and they'll have imagery in their books and articles that sort of draw the viewer, the mm -hmm. audience into what they're doing. But it's not, they're not teaching fantasy. Or they think they're not. They are. But to those that are they're eating this stuff up, they actually believe this is what the scripture says. And it's, it's not only uh, is the gospel non-existent, you don't hear the gospel of salvation. You don't hear uh, a reverence for the word of God. Mm -hmm. it, it, is, it is dark. It is uh, sensational. It is lustful. It is uh, all these horrifying things graphic images, demonic yeah, type Some of them are imagery. very awful to look at. Um, it's, it's something that we shouldn't even probably be entertaining. Right. 